Live uh, TV shows and stage shows often have a warm-up act. These acts are designed to loosen up the audience and to begin, begin to help the people who are on the spot become more responsive when the main act comes on. John the Baptist, in a sense, was playing a role. He was dressed in clothing reminiscent of Elijah. He did so as a conscious act, we believe, because he was preparing the way. And one of the understandings at the time was that Elijah would come as the forerunner of the Messiah. So John is a kind of warm-up act. John places himself in the story of Israel. John went into the wilderness, which was where Israel met God. A reminder for the people of the time after the exodus in Egypt. John gave God's guidance as Moses had in the wilderness. He called people to turn to God. And to show that by being baptized. He called them to live a good life, to treat people fairly, to be thankful for what they had and to share what they could. John's approach as a warm-up act was to build to this great crescendo. He spoke about this one who would come, a Messiah who would be like a fearsome judge who would come with fire and a winnowing fork in his hand designed to separate the wheat from the chaff, naturally to keep the wheat and to burn the chaff. In a way, John's message was, make sure you are the wheat, bear fruit of repentance. It was quite an act. And then Matthew does something quite interesting. Then Jesus came, he writes. Those simple words. Jesus came as one of the crowd. He didn't stand out. He wasn't dressed differently. He didn't appear to be one who was somehow distinctive. And yet John, at some level, knew who he was. But he also appears not to have met John's expectations. What was going on? After all of John's build-up and warm-up, who came? A humble peasant from Galilee, without a fanfare, just one of the crowd, not appearing to be especially king-like, for instance. I think that what Matthew is indicating is that in that passage, we have to learn that God comes on the terms God chooses. So even John, the great one, had to learn that Jesus came to do what God wanted. The way of Jesus was also inserting himself into the story of Israel. But it wasn't the great story of triumph. It was the story of being sustained often through struggle. Jesus, it seems, loved the book of the prophet Isaiah more than any other. The New Testament quotes from Isaiah more than any other First Testament book. And our first reading today tells us of the servant of God. I believe that the words about the servant and the way the servant fits into the experience of Israel is a sign of how Jesus wanted people to receive his ministry. <laughs> 